Corbyn. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I hope the whole House will join me in paying tribute to the late Rodney Bickerstaff, the former General Secretary of Unison, who died last week. He will be remembered for his warmth and esteem he was held throughout the Labour movement and throughout the community. But more than that, Mr Speaker, almost more than anyone else, he made sure that the national minimum wage happened in this country and millions of workers are better off for the great work that Rodney did during his life. Can we say thank you, Rodney, for everything you did in your life? Uh, Mr Speaker, the rollout of universal credit is already causing debt, poverty and homelessness. Does the Prime Minister accept it would be irresponsible to press on regardless? First of all, of course, we offer our condolences to Rodney Bickerstaff's friend and family uh, on, his, uh, on his death. Uh, he and I would uh, probably never have agreed on very much in, in uh, politics, but obviously... <laughs> but obviously, uh, the role that he played, he played with commitment and dedication through his life. The Right Honourable Gentleman has asked me about universal credit. I think perhaps it is worth us uh, recognising why it is that we brought universal credit into place in the first place. What we want is a welfare system that provides a safety net for those who need it, that helps people to get into the workplace, helps people to earn more and to provide for themselves and their families. The system that we inherited from Labour did not do that. It was far too complicated, there were too many different sorts of payments. And crucially, crucially, those who earned more, too many of those who earned more, found themselves with less money in their pockets. For too many people under Labour, it were, they were better off in benefit, on benefits. That is not the system that we want. What we want is universal credit, which is simpler, more straightforward, and makes sure that work always pays. Mr Speaker, I wonder which planet the Prime Minister is on. uh, Mr Speaker, the Citizens Advice Bureau describes universal credit as, and I quote, a disaster waiting to happen. Based on assisting tens of thousands of claimants with debt, they've made that conclusion. Housing associations report an increase of up to 50% in eviction of tenants with rent arrears due to universal credit. Can't the Prime Minister and the DWP wake up to reality and halt this process? As I've explained, we have very good reasons for changing the system. Yes, the DWP has been... We have been listening to the concerns that have been raised uh, in relation to the way in which universal credit has operated. Changes have been made, performance has increased. For example, early, at the beginning of this year, only 55% of people were getting their first payment on time. Now that is over 80%. Of course, there is more for us to do. Of course, there is more for us to do, and that's why the Secretary of State and the Department for Work and Pensions continue to monitor this and continue to ensure that performance increases. But underlying this is a need to make sure that we have a system that makes sure that work pays and that people are not better off on benefits. Jeremy Corbyn. Mr Speaker, the Halton Housing Trust reports a 100% year-on-year increase in the number of evictions. Half of all council tenants on universal credit are at least a month in arrears in their rent. This weekend, the former Prime Minister, Sir John Major, described universal credit, and I quote, as operationally messy, socially unfair and unforgiving. He's right, isn't he? It's years behind schedule. It's forcing people to food banks, driving up evictions, leaving families in debt. Can't the Prime Minister see it? If the former Prime Minister can understand it, why can't this one? Well, I say to the Right Honourable Gentleman, in fact, research shows that after four months, the number of people on universal credit in arrears, rent arrears, had fallen by a third. But... I have... um, as As I've just said in my previous answer to the Right Honourable Gentleman, 
Of course, we recognise that there have been some issues to address in, in the uh, rolling out of this uh, particular credit. Uh, benefit. That is why we have been taking our time in doing it. The underlying reason for moving to universal credit is still the right one. We see more people getting into work on universal credit than on job seekers' allowance. And there, are, uh, there is the possibility in place for those people who are not in a position to be able to wait for their first payment. There are, they are in need. If they are in need, they are able to ask for an advance. And the number of people getting an advance has increased. Jeremy Corbyn. Recognises there are problems with it. The IPPR and the Child Poverty Action Group estimate it's going to put another 200,000 children into poverty. Last month, apparently a dozen Conservative MPs wrote to the Work and Pension Secretary calling for a pause. Perhaps they should have listened to people like Georgina, who contacted me this week. And I quote, I quote from Georgina, who says this: "All summer." We were left with no money to survive, as it just stopped abruptly. We would have lost everything if it weren't for my family. Others cannot rely on family and are facing eviction. I urge the Prime Minister, show some leadership, pause universal credit and stop driving up poverty, debt and homelessness, because that is what it does. Can I say to the right honourable gentleman, I'd be happy to look at, at the case of Georgina if, he, Georgina, if he would like to send me those particular details. As I have just said, and once again, I did actually refer to this in my previous answer, had the right honourable gentleman listened to it, it is possible for those who are in need to get advance payments. The number of those getting advance payments has increased from 35% to 50%, uh, the majority, just over 50%. So we are seeing the system being improved and performance improving. But let's just think about the Labour Party's record on this whole issue of welfare. Under the Labour Party, under the Labour Party, 1.4 million people spent most of the last decade trapped on out-of-work benefits. Under the Labour Party, the number of households where no, under the Labour Party, the, the Prime Minister's response must be heard. The Prime Minister, under the Labour government, the number of households where no member had ever worked nearly doubled. The welfare bill went up by 60 per cent in real terms, which cost every household an extra £3,000 a year. That's not the way to run a system. That's the way to have a system that is failing ordinary working people. Corbyn. Mr Speaker, the last Labour government lifted a million children out of poverty. Gloucester City Homes, Mr Speaker, has evicted one in eight of all of its tenants because of universal credit. The Prime Minister talks about helping the poorest, but the reality is a very, very different story. Not only are people being driven into poverty, but absurdly, Mr Speaker, the universal credit helpline costs claimants 55 pence per minute for the privilege of trying to get someone to help them claim what they believe they're entitled to. Will the Prime Minister today show some humanity, intervene and make at least the helpline free? Uh, I say to the right honourable gentleman, I've made very clear that we continue to look at how we're mon uh, dealing with this and ensuring that we get this system out in a way that is actually working for people and the performance is increasing and it is working because more people are getting into work on universal credit than are, were on job seekers' allowance. But, and I do want people to be able to find work. I want people to be able to get better jobs, to be able to earn more, to be able to get on without government support. That's why it's so important that we create, help businesses to create jobs. And perhaps when he stands up, he'd like to welcome the fact that three million more jobs have been created due to a strong economy under a conservative government. Mr Speaker, sadly, universal credit is only one of a string of failures of this government. Everywhere you look, it's a government in chaos. 
on the most important issues facing this country, it's a shambles. Brexit negotiations made no progress. Bombardier and other workers facing redundancy. Most working people worse off. Young people pushed into record levels of debt. A million elderly people not getting essential care. Our NHS at breaking point. Mr Speaker, this Government is more interested in fighting amongst themselves than in solving these problems. Mr Speaker, isn't it the case isn't it, the, isn't it the case, Mr Speaker, that if the Prime Minister can't lead, she should leave? Yeah. 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 Sir, tell the right honourable gentleman what the record of this government is. A deficit down by over two thirds. Yeah. Three, million, three million more people in jobs. Yeah. One point, one point eight million more children in good or outstanding yeah. schools. More people visiting A and E. More people getting operations than ever before. Record levels of funding into the NHS. Record levels of funding. Record levels of funding in the NHS. Record levels of funding into our schools. But what did we see about the Labour Party? What did we see about the Labour Party from their conference? Well, what we saw. Wait for it. Members are becoming very, very overexcited. The response will be heard. Prime Minister. What did we hear from Labour's conference? From Labour's conference. Don't want to. What happened at Labour's conference? First of all, first of all, shelter, shelter said that the Labour Party's housing policy would end up harming people on low incomes. <laughs> Labour's flagship Haringey Council rejected another of their housing policies. The Equalities and Human Rights Commission said Labour needs to establish that it is not a racist party. <laughs> And the Labour leader of Brighton Council threatened to ban Labour conferences because of freely expressed anti-Semitism. And that, that was all before the Shadow Chancellor admitted a Labour government would bring a run on the pound and ordinary working people would pay the price. <laughs>